Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, many of you will remember The Martian and its finale where the Hermes makes an emergency course change by depressurizing the spacecraft through the airlock. And that scene came to mind the other day when I was asked whether decompressing the space station through a single airlock could knock it out of orbit. So what we're really doing is a delta-v equation where we're calculating how much the velocity changes. The mass of the space station, according to NASA, is about 420 tons. Now, the question is, what is the mass of the propellant in this case, the atmosphere that will escape? Well, according to the same website, the habitable volume is 388 cubic meters, but more importantly, the pressurized volume is 916 cubic meters. The atmosphere on the space station is a regular oxygen-nitrogen atmosphere, and that will typically have an air density of about 1.22 kilograms per cubic meter. And that gives us an upper limit on the mass of about 1.1 tons. But that's very likely too high because inside the pressurized volume, they're also going to have their food supplies, hardware, their plushy toys. Okay, obviously the plushy toys are partly air, but you know, let's just say one ton for now. That makes for a mass difference of about 0.24%. The next question is, how fast does the gas leave the space station? Well, according to the kinetic theory of gases, the average speed of these uh, oxygen and nitrogen molecules will probably be about 600 meters per second. This is rough estimate. And if they were all somehow collimated to go in exactly the same direction, we can simply multiply 1 by 600 and then divide it by 420, and we get a delta V of about 1.4 meters per second. That's about 5 kilometers per hour, and it is not enough to knock the space station out of orbit. Now, the actual number that I came up with, there, there's a lot of room for change in this. For example, if the gas doesn't leak out in exactly the same direction, which it doesn't because gases love to expand in every direction, then uh, the performance will be lower. If, on the other hand, that someone decided to build a rocket nozzle on there with a throat that constrained the gas to flow through it at supersonic speeds and then expand out through a nozzle, it could get much higher performance than that. But not enough to knock the space station out of orbit. There simply isn't enough gas inside this structure. But what if we replaced the International Space Station with something that had more volume and less mass? Well, the best thing I can think of is the B-330 uh, module which is developed by Bigelow Airspace. This is an inflatable habitation module and it's 330 because it has 330 meter or cubic meters of internal space. Total mass of the module is expected to be about 23 tons. Doing the numbers on that gives you a delta V of about 10 meters per second. It turns out that cold gas thrusters aren't particularly efficient, and when you're only storing your gas at one atmosphere of pressure, you're really not making the best use of the storage volume. So let's take the opportunity to switch to another movie. At the end of Gravity, uh, Dr. Stone is seen maneuvering using a fire extinguisher in space. And you know, this is the kind of thing that I've seen demonstrated on Earth using office chairs and fire extinguishers, but I wonder how much delta V you could get out of a fire extinguisher. Let's imagine this is a carbon dioxide fire extinguisher. Now, you can imagine it's just like another cold gas thruster. Cold gas thrusters that I've seen have a specific impulse of about 72, 73, but those use nitrogen. Nitrogen has an atomic mass of about 28, whereas the carbon dioxide will have an atomic mass of about 44. So you divide one by the other and take the square root. And yeah, that gives you about a specific impulse of maybe 59 to 60. So that means that for every kilogram of carbon dioxide expelled through the nozzle, you would get a thrust equivalent to 60 kilograms of force. There are many different sizes of fire extinguishers, but anything from 2 to 10 kilograms of carbon dioxide seems relatively commonplace. And the one she's using in the movie is actually pretty large. The question then is, how much does she weigh? Well, you know, okay, average humans say that she's about 70 kilograms plus the mass of the spacesuit. In that scene, she's wearing a so-called spacesuit, which isn't really a proper EVA suit. It's a pressure suit for, you know, sitting around inside the capsule and not dying when it depressurizes. That only weighs about 10 kilograms. Maybe there's some life support added on, but I think it's reasonable to say that she's under 100 kilograms there. 
So every kilogram of CO2 will probably change your velocity by about 6 meters per second, which is, you know, okay, because you could get up to like 60 meters per second. Not enough to deorbit, but you wouldn't want to deorbit in a so-called suit. But definitely enough for the kind of maneuvers that we see going on in the movie, assuming that she, of course, points it in the correct direction and doesn't spin herself up instead. For comparison, the manned manoeuvring unit, the jetpack that was used in the 80s to fly around without any tethers, that had a total propellant load of about 12 kilograms of nitrogen in two Kevlar-wrapped tanks. But the unit itself weighed about 150 kilograms, and then you had the much heavier EVA suit. So although there was more propellant in this and it had a better specific impulse, uh, when you added in all the extra mass of the suit and the hardware, the expected delta V from that was only 25 meters per second. And for further comparison, the jetpacks used in Kerbal Space Program, they have a delta V of about 550 meters per second, which means they must be using something vastly more potent and therefore dangerous than your know, compressed nitrogen gas. And of course that makes complete sense because it is Kerbal Space Program. And while the man manoeuvring unit only flew a few times in the 1980s, there is a modern version of it which is a lot less capable. It's called SAFER, that is Sa Simplified Aid for EVA Rescue. And it's, you know, it's, it's a much, much smaller version that gives the astronauts about 2 meters per second of delta V to get them back to the space station if they somehow floated away without uh, any way, without any tethers holding them on. And compressed nitrogen thrusters aren't just used in the sedate environment of spacewalks. They're also used to control the boosters of the Falcon 9 as they flip around to come back to Earth. When the boosters are in space, they only need a very limited amount of maneuvering capability, so they don't need to use anything more potent such as hydrogen peroxide or hydrazine. So coming back to the original question, decompressing the space station will not knock it out of the orbit, but the crew will probably have more pressing concerns if that happens. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.